uh, the My Startup Initiative was launched under the roadmap as well. It's one of the key initiatives to bring together the entire ecosystem under a single viewpoint. So my personal view, I think I would love to have a thousand unicorns, right? Or a million unicorns, right? But peppered in between to have some unicorns as well because we want to show the world that Malaysian startups are capable. But I think a mark of an ecosystem's performance is this. Hello listeners, as you can see, today we are at Cradle Fun. You can see that big word, Cradle, at the back. Um, so a bit of background, Cradle is under the Ministry of Science and Technology uh, and is also the focal point agency for the Malaysian startups ecosystem. And we have the group CEO, Norman, here with us. Norman, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks, Bob. Good. Great to be here. Yeah, so um, it is good to be here as well. It's my first time at Cradle and uh, I, I think, attended your talk at KL20 earlier this year. <laughs> so I think my first question would be, it says focal point, right? right. What does focal point actually mean? Right. Um, well, if I can um, clarify a little bit about Cradle. See, uh, Cradle was actually established under the Ministry of Finance back in 2003. So we are a 20-year-old agency. So only up until uh, recently in 2021 that we were given this mandate to be the focal point for the uh, Malaysian startup ecosystem. Why? Because at that point, the government believed that we need to develop um, and elevate uh, the Malaysian startup ecosystem. So hence why the startup ecosystem roadmap was launched. So it's a 10-year roadmap from 2021 to 2030 with the main objective of placing Malaysia among the top 20 global startup ecosystem so that's a it's a really tall order but i think we are you know with great effort from everyone uh we can hopefully reach it definitely i have we have strong faith in that actually so with that mandate um we are actually acting as the lead coordinator for the roadmap itself so cradle along with other agencies be it public and private companies as well who are under this roadmap we have 16 interventions across five uh, drivers, main drivers, be it funding, uh, regulatory policies, you know, talent. Um, so we all strive to actually develop the right initiatives to move us towards that vision to be the top 20. Mm, so that's the, the coordinator is the word you use. Yeah, the, the lead uh, yeah. in the center of it, yeah. So that's, that's what focal point means. Yeah. Um, well, if I can add on a little bit to that as well. So... In extension, uh, the My Startup Initiative was launched under the roadmap as well as one of the key initiatives to bring together the entire ecosystem under a single viewpoint. So this is another one of uh, Cradle's been mandated to execute this My Startup Initiative. So recently this year, actually in April in KL20, where we launched the uh, My Startup Single Window Platform. So that in another focal point uh, uh, role for Cradle is to actually be that uh, single reference point for Malaysia startup ecosystem. I'm, I'm not sure if you've, um, I mean, hopefully everyone has had a chance to actually visit that platform. So it actually encompasses anything and everything about the Malaysian startup ecosystem, be it for startups, investors, and even the talents who want to get into this uh, business. Yes, um, and you mentioned the roadmap, right? So yeah. can you briefly tell us what's in the roadmap as well? Well, I mean, well, it's a huge roadmap actually, to be honest with you, because there's a lot of players within it. Uh, five uh, economic drivers and 16 interventions under all of that. Um, so like I said, uh, it encompasses every stakeholders within the ecosystem from public and private. So we have agencies like Cradle, MathCap, uh, MDEC, Talent Corp, all in our very specific roles within the uh, drivers itself, right? And then uh, we're also working together with the public uh, accelerators and, and ecosystem builders as well to come uh, and create and curate uh, the right programs for us to develop the ecosystem. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, we will possibly flash the roadmap as well as yeah. part of this interview. I know it's, <laughs> it's a It's quite comprehensive, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll pick parts of it as well. Yeah. Um, so like, 
I am part of a few startup communities. Uh, I, we, we, our podcast was also at a few startup events as well this year. Awesome. Uh, we were actually in tech in Asia as well. We were yes, one of that the, was a great event. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We were one of the media partners for them. Awesome. Um, so like um, for the startups, right? How does Cradle help these startups? Well, we normally focus on the early stage startups. So um, beginning from the inception of the startup itself towards its early commercialization. So, but then again, with our role being a focal point, we can actually support startup at every stage of their development, actually. But in essence, I mean, in, in Cradle's core, it's about the funding, right? The, the early stage funding, be it from the grant or our previous program, which is actually an equity investment into early stage startups. So, but at its core, uh, Cradle is very much into early stage uh, startup development and support. And hence why our motto is a creating leading startups. So, and then from our success story, actually my taxi, which we now know as Grab, right? So it kind of like really rings to that. Yeah. So um, in terms of our funding, currently we have two types of grants. Uh, we have one, which is a prototyping grant called CIP Spark. It's a grant up to 150,000. It's actually open up to individuals. So you can apply as individuals or as companies. But of course, uh, once you have actually uh, been approved as a recipient, you do have to set up your own company. We'll go through all the due diligence and everything, right? So the next grant is actually an early commercialization grant called a CIP Sprint. So that is actually a convertible grant. So, I mean, Credo retains the right to convert it into equity. But the main thing here is that it is uh, an early commercialization grant of up to 600,000 ringgit. So for the recipient to actually be able to focus on how to commercialize their product into the, the larger market out there. Apart from that, there are other capacity building programs as well under my startup. So there are accelerators, pre-accelerators, hackathons, uh, boot camps, and, and then there's actually another thing that we are working on actually currently is actually this uh, new feature, which, is, which explains why Cradle has been going out a lot, especially overseas, because we want to build that connections with other ecosystems out there. Because uh, one of the areas that we see that we can really improve on is actually um, exposing our startup to the larger world out there. So how can Cradle best support that actually, you know, to actually be able to um, maybe de-risk uh, that part of the journey for Malaysian startups. Wow. Thanks for sharing about yeah. the grants. I believe uh, it's uh, you can find out more, of course, on sure. Cradle's website. Yeah. Uh, and uh, that's very comprehensive as well. Um, so I think the word cradle um, mm. is really for baby, la, right? The cradle in the, the <laughs> baby right. in the cradle, <laughs> right? So people yeah. people sometimes forget about that. So it's like really like the baby, the infancy mm. of, of the startup itself. So besides you mentioned Grab Taxi, what other examples can you give us? Oh, throughout the 20 years, I mean, yeah. we've actually funded more than a thousand startups already. Um, from the 250 million or so grants that we've disbursed, uh, GDP contribution has been more than a billion ringgit, more than 80,000 jobs have been created. Uh, we actually hold uh, some of the highest commercialization rate for government grants at about more than 60-70%. That's huge. Yeah. So I think we are very proud of that. And there's a lot of success stories. Yes, Grab being one of them. I mean, we do have um, other examples like Kakitangan, Pandai, uh, Inference Tech, uh, Affilia. If you've heard, they actually won the Startup World Cup Malaysia round last year. So they've actually gone to compete then in Silicon Valley last year. I mean, unfortunately, they didn't win the whole thing. But, you know, I mean, it shows that actually Malaysian startups are capable of, you know, potent potentially succeeding outside of Malaysia. And I just came back from the uh, this year's 2024 round of a Malaysian edition for Startup World Cup. And a winner was selected, uh, Midwest Composites. I think we are quite happy to see them actually um, taking the Malaysian flag to the Startup World Cup grand finale in San Francisco wow. in about, uh, I think, in October. Okay. Yeah. Competing oh. for a million US dollars. Oh, I, hope, I hope they win the World yeah, Cup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll be cheering them <laughs> I on. I think right? that's the, the World Cup. You stand a chance. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least yeah. we qualify. It's great. It's great. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, um, I, I hear that you are investing not only, uh, like, putting up efforts in Malaysia, but also across the region because mm -hmm. then more startups can get access in the region as well. Ah. Um, so, I think next year, we are the host <laughs> of... Um, the home of ASEAN, right? So that, tell us more about the ASEAN Startup Initiative as well. Oh, yes, exactly. Um, that is, uh, 
another one of our uh, recent new mandate um, we have been uh, appointed to lead the ASEAN Startup Initiative um, so we will first start with an ASEAN portal where we can actually uh, bring together our ASEAN startups under a single you know kind of a window in a sense right for ASEAN right um, uh, upon which we will follow on with uh, some other capacity developments, capacity building events, but it's a regional kind of a program. So we'll be inviting startups from all uh, across the region to come and you know share ideas, you know share challenges and pitfalls and stuff. The main idea here is to actually find um, collaborative points, ideas, and synergies between our startups because I think ASEAN as a region can actually. When we come together, we can actually make a very strong case point when we go outside globally. Mm. Yeah. So, I mean, apart from that, um, we are planning quite a, an interesting event. Uh, we're, for now, we're calling it like an ASEAN Startup Festival. Okay, a working title. So, we're, uh, we're targeting between Q3 and Q4 2025. Wow. Yeah. Okay, hope, hope it, to It's going to be an exciting year next year. Hey, everyone. Producer Elton here. We share stories from business leaders in Asia and if this video brought you any value, hit the subscribe button down below, like and share with your friends. Thank you. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So like when, when I was scale 20, one of the discussion points was of course funding in mm. Malaysia itself. Mm -hmm. And one of the comparisons, especially in ASEAN, is you say they a lot of people see that you know there's a lot of funding in Singapore, mm. whether it's Singapore or Indonesia, mm. then we are the middle child per se. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your thoughts on that? I, I always I always say this phrase, like, you know, you know. Um, by being, you know, within this ASEAN community, you know, what, what's stopping us from actually uh, starting out and building ourselves in Malaysia and securing the funds from Singapore to sell it in Indonesia? So it's like that, that kind of mentality, that kind of concept, you know, if you can really uh, work it out among the, the member states, you know, find a way how to make it happen, I think it can really be a success. Yeah, yeah, we need to find a way, right? So yeah, we are in the yeah. middle, but you know, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, I mean, you can you can draw a comparison with the EU, yeah, right, in the sense of how they bring all the European countries under a single knee. So I'm I'm pretty sure. I mean, of course, ASEAN is not exact same copy as EU, but I think we can probably draw some areas where we can learn from and actually, you know, do something here in this region. Mm. Uh, I think it just takes the will, and I'm sure we can do it. All right. Yeah. So look forward to next year as well. Yeah. Um, so like you recently, you know, you collaborated as well with Invest India mm. right, with uh, yes. their Startup Alliance as well. So yeah. are there more collaborations like these? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like I said, um, um, we're building these global connections. Um, it will be on the platform itself, you know, because uh, we want to help our startups take that first step into a market beyond Malaysia. So uh, the India-Malaysia Startup Alliance is actually a first of its kind for both countries, even for India. Before this, they called it Startup Bridge. Uh, so now we are Malaysia being the first uh, partner that they are working together with under an alliance uh, setting. So there will be programs, uh, bilateral programs going back and forth. I mean, there's uh, um, you know, sending delegates to India and then Indian delegates to come over here and stuff like that. So it's all to facilitate this kind of a free flow connection of talents and ideas in a sense. You know? uh, and imagine if we have that with all the other ecosystems as well throughout the world. So this is what we're really, really working hard on actually. Yeah. What other countries coming out next? Oh, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but but if I can take uh, from where we've been this year, okay, we've been to London, we've been to Paris, we've been to uh, the Middle East. So yeah, so we're covering quite a bit. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and uh, like I, I mentioned earlier, we were at KL Twenty earlier this year. It was a huge event, mm -hmm. right? Um, so like, how has my startup been since then? Since that announcement. Well, um, in terms of the single window itself, it is an ever-evolving platform. We do not intend to keep it as is because it has to uh, mature and grow with time and demands from the ecosystem. Similar to our grant programs as well, we've gone through multiple uh, types, of pro uh, how do you say, uh, types of grants over the years, over the 20 years. It has evolved. So that's the thing. I mean, just like a startup, right? You can't stay still. You have to continue to innovate as the market evolves. So we're doing the same thing as well. <laughs> yeah. So with the platform, the My Startup platform, so one of the key features that we'll be launching, 
the global connections part. And then there are other plans as well to make it a true single window platform for the startup ecosystem. I mean, if I can give you a sneak peek into it, I mean, just imagine if anything you do with the ecosystem can be done via that platform. Mm. Yeah, and um, like, I think one of the feedback I got yeah. for KL20 was it was a very macro event. It was huge. Yeah. Uh, so like for the very babies, <laughs> like the people that asked me, uh, like the very like you know the person who has new IP, you know things mm-hmm. like that, mm-hmm. um, and the person who just had a just started his new startup. So what is your advice for those new startups? How can they you know get connected with the initiatives that is uh, by Cradle? Yeah, well, the first thing go to my startup, okay, you know, yeah, uh, register yourself there and immerse yourself into the ecosystem. So, um, like I said, the next uh, evolution of the page itself, because the page is actually curated. So in the sense that you come in and you just say you're a founder, right? At what stage you are and all the programs and the funding will be filtered for you at your stage. So we'll be working more to bring in more features into there as well. Um, but my advice to the startups, I mean, um, network is key. And don't be intimidated by big, big events. If it's a macro event or a micro event, it doesn't matter. I mean, knowledge is power. So connection is as well. So you come in, you immerse yourself, know what's out there because having the right exposure can really make or break your startup actually. So know who to connect with, how you want to market your product, who you're going to sell it to and how you're going to get your funding, how you're going to develop your, your, your product, your ideas itself as well. Yeah, because there's a lot of information. There's a lot of resources out there. You have to go out and get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But if you're confused, if you're ever having uh, any problems or anything like that, you feel free to come to Cradle. Mm. You know, we'll help guide you. Okay, yeah. yeah. This, uh, <laughs> this uh, uh, Sanway Putra here, right? So, yeah, Sanway Putra Mall. <laughs> Mall. Ah, Sanway Putra Mall, All right? Yeah. So, uh, I think, um, yeah, thanks for sharing that. So, yeah, besides the startups, you also help investors as well. So, how yeah. do you help these investors? Well, uh, similarly, I mean, we go via our platform. So everything revolves around our platform because it really gives a really good base uh, in terms of guiding anyone into the ecosystem, be it investors or even our foreign government officials as well. So we are ha- actually, sorry to uh, divert a little bit, but we're getting interest from other countries wanting to learn how we're developing our ecosystem. So that's a really great validation of what we're doing right now. So, um, yeah, for investors, again, uh, you can come into our platform and see the kind of startups that we have, the kind of technologies that they're in, uh, and, uh, even if they have a race, or even if they are, uh, how to say, um, looking to fundraise, you know. Um, yeah, and then in terms of regulatory side as well, how do you set up in Malaysia? How do you set up a fund? How do you look for a partner? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's just a lot of resources there. I mean, uh, imagine we are still building it as well. Yeah. But um, there are other agencies as well that we can always um, uh, refer them to, you know, because you can always come over to Cradle, again, as a focal point, right? So, and then we can lead you to the right partners, actually, for you to gain more uh, knowledge about the yeah. ecosystem. Cool. That's what investors can do. Yeah. Uh, just but contact Cradle first, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so I, before we started the interview, I commented on Cradle's jacket, very nice jacket, <laughs> right? So is it getting cold? Like some people say there's a funding winter. Right? <laughs> is, it, is it getting cold? Is it the best time to start a startup? Um, the thing that I always say is that, uh, you know, if you have a really great business idea, a really great product, right? The funding will come. Mm. I think that's what I always believe in. And investors are actually hungry for this. They are out there. Actually, uh, they're, they're actually waiting for the next best idea. So, yeah, the, the thing that uh, I would say to our startups out there is actually um, try not to limit yourself in your idea. Know what the investors are looking for and curate that pitch a little bit, you know, in that sense, you know. And also when you're developing your product, make sure that it's something that is uh, marketable, not just in Malaysia. Yeah, something that can actually be scaled up and outside of Malaysia as well. Yeah, so then so that's where the opportunity is, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because investors, I mean, ultimately, what do they want, right? They want returns, right? Mm. Yeah. So how do we best offer them the best return? Yeah. I think from a you know person out in, in the industry, what I see is there's a lot more players now. There's a lot mm. of more funds, a lot more 
programs like mm. Antler, like these yeah. other programs that yeah. they don't used to exist before COVID. There are mm. more programs. Mm -hmm. And I think what they mean is there's more stringency, there's more requirement. Well, there's always that learning from mm. the COVID period. Mm. You know, but before that, you know, there's a lot of uh, speculative investment where you get sky high ah, valuations. Yes, you get there's no speculation loads anymore. And loads yeah. of, uh, what do you call it, uh, unicorns, right, being yeah. created. Now, investors are a lot more cautious, but doesn't mean that their uh, appetite for speculative investments has actually ceased. They're just a little bit more careful. So they're looking for not just the great best idea. They will invest in it, but they really want is they will test you in terms of how you actually you know give them their returns in exit or how do you want to grow actually. So there'll probably be a bit more scrutiny in that. Yeah. Mm. And is there a difference between investors in Asia and and you know, probably oh, yeah. in the West? Oh yeah. Like they say <laughs> in the West, you need a good story. Here you need to show a business model, right? Um, I think investors being investors is always about the returns at the end of it. So what would create that value to the investors is what they are looking for. So like I said, understand who you are pitching to. Because it's different when you're pitching to a VC versus when you're pitching to a PE investor uh, or a family office uh, Invest type of investor. Yeah, yeah, the the value or the returns. Yeah, what they're looking for is, is different. Mm. Yeah. So I think if, even when you go public as well, so you're dealing with public investors, right? Mm. So again, understand um, who you're targeting. Yeah. And uh, I think you mentioned just now unicorns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so people are not so fantasy anymore. <laughs> they, are, they don't fantasize so much anymore. But what, are your, what is your point? Will, will we get more unicorns out of Malaysia? Um, I would never say it's, a, it's an impossibility. You know, nothing's impossible. Uh, I believe in that. Uh, I think whether it is the right target to have, I think that's the strongest question here, actually. But I think a mark of an ecosystem's performance is its ability to actually create high-value startups. So whether it being uh, a thousand unicorns or 10 unicorns, uh, that's the question, actually. So my personal view, I think I would love to have a thousand unicorns, right? Or a million unicorns, right? But peppered in between they have some unicorns as well because we want to show the world that Malaysian startups are capable you know because there's this thing about Malaysian startups being undervalued by foreign investors which I think is unfair yeah so let's let's show them our true worth mm. yeah. what do you mean by undervalued <laughs> so I you know sometimes uh, we hear these stories about um, Malaysian startups going over to pitch in front of uh, foreign investors they and actually push down the valuation. So, you know, I mean, I, we hear stories, right? Whether it's true or untrue, you know, we will keep it as such, right? But the fact of the matter is that, uh, is it, is the force of actually pushing down a Malaysian startups valuation just because it's Malaysian. So what do we do about it? So we actually had to tell the world out there, you know what, Malaysian startups are capable don't even think about undervaluing us. Yeah. yeah. Don't think about it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Norman. I believe yeah. we spent a lot of time here. Oh, really? I, I didn't uh, realize. <laughs> and I think the takeaway is that yeah. what Cradle is, is doing is building that ecosystem. Yeah. Right. Uh, it's not just, you know, one expect, but you're building funding, ecosystem, investors, mm -hmm. uh, and around the region as well. So you can have partnerships. That's very important. Yes. Yeah, and exactly. uh, I think most importantly is to get to that single focal point first. <laughs> My startup <laughs> and Cradle. You can, yeah, you start your journey then yeah. yeah and then then you will be directed to the right people and the yeah. right uh, parties as well yeah. so right cool. thank thank you so much norman hey no worries well